part of the Peninsula Community Foundation was to recognize that if clergy from every faith talked to each other, had a working relationship, had an understanding of each other's faith, that this would enhance the community capacity to have respect for people of all faiths. And that's at the foundation for working together is that people will be comfortable coming together and have respect for each other. So How difficult is that? Because there are clearly in the, as a central element of many faiths is that they're the one true faith. This is America in which your right to believe that's your one true faith it doesn't have to infringe on mine, but the fact is you get, the, you get two people together who think that they're the one true faith, that would make right. for an interesting conversation. I, I'm really glad you put it that way because there are some core issues that we sometimes don't address. Um, and we have often talked about getting together in the faith community around the things that unite us and not recognizing there are things that have historically and in some ways divide us or are, are distinctive. The clergy network has had a very clear understanding from the beginning that our mantra was going to be that we recognize there are things that divide us or that we're different and we're going to come together anyway. Uh, and so the dialogue format is designed so that we actually talk uh, for, uh, we have two hour dialogues, so we talk for a long time around the fabric of our, of our face and come to understand what we differ in, but that also those things need not divide us and that we can respect each other. We could not function 50 years ago because there were faiths where you were not allowed to go into other people's places of worship. So that's not the case today. So while we have ideas that each of our faith is the true expression of uh, a belief, um, we've come to understand that one can believe in your true uh, uh, commitment to your faith and at the same time have respect for people of other faith who have a different different beliefs and different understanding. Jay, stay with us. Uh, we're going to be back and I, I want to remind you that uh, we have a new show on Peninsula TV. It's called Spiritual Choices and uh, there's a lot of discussion that goes on that show talking about the kinds of things that we're talking about today. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Rabbi Jay Miller. Welcome back to the game. I'm Mark Simon. He's Bob Marks. Over here we have Rabbi Jay Miller, Executive Director of the Peninsula Clergy Network. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the network and we're starting to talk about some larger religious issues as well. It's nice of him to be here and discuss his own faith in our context. Um, we were talking about the peninsula and how many people, you, you estimate 50,000 people go to regular worship on a weekend over, over the span of all the variety of services that are available. But this is not a place where people necessarily regard themselves as uh, religious in the, in the traditional context. People go to the beach and think that they're at church. People go to a forest and think they're at church. Is that a, is that a, a fair expression or is that, um, f in terms of the people you're serving and working with, the clergy network, would they rather see people going to church and mosques and temples? Um. I first of all feel that there's some overgeneralizations, partially because the conversation is in the background. We did an interesting thing. We got for the sesquicentennial the founding dates of every congregation on the peninsula, or at least most of them, and did a poster. And uh, when I went to various places to talk about this or mentioned it, people came up to me and said, oh, my congregation is uh, founded in whatever, do you have them on the list? Those people in a meeting of the San uh, Mateo Historical Society or wherever I might be would never have talked about the religious connection but because I brought it in the context of sesquicentennial the founding date of the congregation uh, they were eager to make sure that their place of worship was on the on the list and so I find and also because I'm a rabbi and a clergy person uh, that people will come to, up to me in context that are seeming to be religiously void uh, and start talking to me about religious issues either personally or in regard to a congregation so I just think that there's a lot of uh, religious connection out there. And the Pew Forum uh, survey that came out two weeks ago would, have, would confirm that. So I think we're talking about largely the difference between institutional affiliation, like any organization. I mean, how many of us are involved in organizations where we want more people you know, coming out and involved in the organization? So I think people's concerned about religious issues, whether it's personally, the kinds of questions that religion has historically looked at, you know, the things that mystify us that get categorized as religious questions. Um, and I think people's involvement and support of the faith community. I think one thing that people feel, feel is that the historic faith community, which was kind of your neighborhood institution, has disappeared. 
And that's because as the country in the 20, 21st century is not a neighborhood institution at all in any way. Um, and I think that one of the things the clergy network is doing uh, is uh, giving congregations and clergy an opportunity to be seen as community partners, not around advocacy. I mean, we're very clear about not advocating for a particular dogma or particular uh, uh, issues. Um, but we're involved in what I call stewardship sometimes, disaster preparedness, the education concern about graduation rates. Those, those affect all of us. Um, and so those are the areas that people are seeing clergy involved with. And I, and I hear people saying, that's what religion should be all about. That's what I would like to see religion doing more of. So I, I think we're responding to people's religious needs in a way that meets both their particular denominational needs, but also the sense of what role religion ought to play in society. Anybody who watches our show uh, is probably wondering how Mark and I could go this long without talking a little bit about politics. I know that's not what your organization's about, but in the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of attention on uh, a pastor from Chicago, Barack Obama's pastor. Uh, but we've also seen in politics uh, over the years, uh, we've seen a number of religious figures getting very much involved. Um, there is a tradition when in the black churches, but in, I think in all churches for religious leaders to be sometimes overly zealous to, to, to get caught up in trying to communicate a message and, and everything like that. How, how much of that you know, is something that we need to deal with in society, something that we need to be aware of, perhaps have a dialogue about. Um, you know, are Reverend Wright's comments uh, unique in, in what you've seen over the years? Well, first of all, absolutely his comments are unique, but they do exist. Um, as in any realm, there are people who express either adamantly or with some uh, offense, um, and that happens. Um, but I, but I, I've been in 60 or 70 congregations over the last five years in worship visiting, um, and the, the opposite, uh, the graciousness mm -hmm. and the openness is, is, uh, is, is more common. Um, but I think that this is something that is a problem of being in the back burner, is, uh, uh, the background in terms of conversation. A few clergy will get the, the spotlight, and the rest of the clergy voices don't get the spotlight. But having had well, in much fact, time... a lot of clergy probably think it's inappropriate for them to try and seize the spotlight, don't they? Uh, I, I'm sure they do. Yeah. I'm sure they do. Um, but um, the... Um, Clergy Network is all about all clergy voices, voices being at the table. I mean, we exist because we wanted one table that all clergy could sit around and talk, and that when the community meets and gathers around the table on core community issues, the clergy would be present at that table, at present at that table too. So I think that the issue has been because of what I think is a, um, uh, a statement of a wall between religion and state. There was never anything about a wall in the Constitution or in the fabric of the founders of this country. It wasn't about a wall. It was about the distinctive role that we each play. And that is true. And we're very clear about there are distinctive roles. We can't do our work in the faith community, nor can the civic society do its work if there's a blurring of those functions. But it isn't a wall. Uh, we interact act together and, and, and have resources to share and, and address issues uh, together uh, to maximize our mutual concern for the, you know, the health and well-being well of the community. So I think what's important is that there be more opportunity for the range of clergy voices to be out there. Um, that will mean that you may hear another voice that you don't like, but I think if